Hey, fellow traders, Larry Williams back here. Thanks to StockCharts.com. Looking forward to sharing with you where I think we go from here. Looks like we've seen an important market rally begin. The question is, uh, where will it go? And how can we predict that? I'm really into trying to learn about what helps us see the future. Those things tend to be seasonal influences. I'm going to talk about that today. Cycles, current market technical position. We'll go over that. When people get really bullish or really bearish, we tend to see reversals in the market. And the big picture is valuation. So valuation can really help us understand the depth of the market's going to happen, really move big to the downside if we're overvalued or big to the upside if we've been undervalued as we have been. Right now, I think high tech is sick and I oh, got a lot of flack from this, but Bitcoin guys and gals is dead. One of my very favorite patterns are what I call the fallen angels. When a stock becomes a fallen angel, it takes years for it to fly again. That's where we are now. Here's an example of a fallen angel. This was Microsoft. You can see in uh, 1999, it had a big run up and then it had a big crash, couldn't come back anywhere to those old highs. And it took forever before Microsoft came back. It was a fallen angel. How about General Electric? Big run up, hottest stock of the year. Oh, crashes, rallies, can't come back. And it never came back. Look at that. That was a big rally we saw and whoo, it didn't come back. Another fallen angel. American International, another great fallen, big massive run up, crack, can't come back to those old highs. And eventually it was a real fallen angel. So where are we right now? Bitcoin was a fallen angel back here in 2018. It wasn't until 2022, 21, that we got back to those old highs. And again, oh, look at that. We have a fallen angel. So Bitcoin in terms of the long term, and there's a reason why all the buyers up here are going to sell every rally. They have massive losses. They'll come back a little bit and like whack-a-mole, boom, they're going to put in those sell orders. And that's why these uh, fallen angels take so long to come back. We're in a fallen angel. It's going a long, long road before this one comes back. The public craziness, I've got a good indicator in the blue line here when the public is really crazy about these markets. They're highly speculative. Well, they're still highly speculative. We need to get back to this very low area before this market can have a substantial rally. We're not there, not yet. However, However, on a very short-term basis, I think it's time for Bitcoin to rally. But again, that's a rally in a downtrend. You want to keep that in mind. The markets that matter right now, what really matters to the market, where we're going, I think, are things like inflation, gold, bonds, crude oil, and consumer stocks. We've got some really interesting ideas. We're going to be talking about, about that for you in just a moment. But first, let's look at what's been the Big bugaboo this year, inflation. And you know, I love this. Roads, where are we going? We don't need roads. Well, we certainly do need roads or a roadmap in the stock market because when we have these driving influences like inflation, uh, it can really affect stock prices. This was the 2022 inflation forecast I did at the end of last year, 2021, and said the forecast was for inflation to start to go down. Oh, that was unheard of as we began this year. I continue to say in my forecast report that we should see an abatement of inflation. And we finally begun to see it. Let me show that to you. First of all, there's been a really strong about a six year cycle in inflation. Inflation is the consumer price index in the black line. I didn't see the cyclical line as blues, highs in inflation, highs in inflation, highs about every six years we have seen highs in inflation. That's happened uh, pretty consistently uh, in the market. So where are we right here right now? Well, we first had the CPI index turned down the last reading. And I suspect this coming month when we get the reading, it will come down again. So it looks to me like we're topping in this six year pattern, which would suggest that this high inflation that we've seen, it's going to take a while to work through it without a doubt, but the horrible pressures of inflation are pretty much behind us. We're going to still see some inflation, but the rate of change of inflation, which is what really influences the stock market, has started to decline. And that's really bullish uh, because this inflation fear, which we've been experiencing a lot, is not going to be nearly as bad 
Now, if you go back, we'll go back and look at when we've seen these lows in inflation. That was 2008, 2009, a great time to buy stocks. 2003, a good time to buy stock. So when we get into low inflation time zones, and we have one coming away in 2026, probably a really good time to be uh, looking to be a buyer of stock. But for now, my work suggests inflation is in the process of topping. So the great fear of inflation will not be nearly as bad as uh, usually has been with traders. Because inflation affects bond prices, if we're starting to see inflation peak out in here, I suspect that bond prices can also rally. So let's talk about the bond market. And here, guys and gals, are my forecast, a very long-term forecast for bonds. You can see bonds have been about a two and a half year cycle. We're right in that area, right here, right now. I think this market is set up to rally and as a market that we should be paying attention to uh, for trading opportunities. Now, you don't have to be a commodity trader. You can trade this. This is the TLT. That's the symbol for the ETF. And this is, of course, some stockchart.com. Not only do we have the cyclical aspect of this market, we also have one of my favorite indicators, which we call the punch. Here it is on a longer term view. Uh, this is in stockchart.com. Notice when this line turns green and then starts to roll down and we've been in a downtrend, great point to be a buyer. Mark has been coming down, we turn up, turn down, great point to be a buyer. Mark is coming down, our green land, we turn green, we roll over, great point to be a buyer. This market, uh, to set up a buy signal, we must see the market coming down and get above the green line. Well, that didn't happen in here. This doesn't happen very often. Uh, going all the way back to 2018, was in one, two, three, four times, that's it. And of the three prior times, we saw some significant rallies in this market. So I definitely think this is one market we want to be paying a lot of attention to, uh, that we should see the bond market start to rally in here. Now, there's another reason to look for this market to rally. And that is because of the seasonal rally. I've marked off in yellow. And again, this is in stockcharts.com. This is one of the indicators, my true seasonal indicators. Usually bonds start to rally about here. That was 2020, 2021. There's a rally. Oh, guys and gals, look where we are. Right here, right now, we're getting in that area of the seasonal low. So we have a market that has been substantially oversold. We have our punch indicator giving a buy signal. At the same time, we have um, a seasonal influence for this market to go higher. Uh, I think that is significant and is uh, clearly a market that uh, traders want to be paying attention to. And more importantly, as a stock person, if we know that interest rates are not going to get slammed here, that has bullish implications for the stock market as well. Clearly, one of the reasons stock prices came down like they did this year, and it's really interesting when you look at it, the stock that really came down, we'll show that to you in a moment, were the high flyer stocks, the, what they called the FANG, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google. Those are the stocks that got hit. The traditional stocks really haven't been in much of a decline this year. So let's look at the crude oil also. The crude oil has really been the market that's influenced, I think, other markets, been a driving force here. Uh, this is what I think is going to happen in crude oil. It has a little more rally to come. One way of forecasting a market is not with just cycles, but with in this case, the dollar index, I push the dollar index forward quite a bit. You can see typically these lows in crude oil have been uh, known in advance by the action of the dollar index. Now, what this is suggesting to us is at the end of this year, we should see a peak in crude oil market of some significance. So this market I expect will trade choppy, but with an upward bias to it. But starting next year, I think we're gonna see crude oil start to turn to the downside uh, which should be a pretty interesting trade. And the effect of energy prices, which is obviously huge throughout the economy, uh, is going to start to change about that time as well. So uh, we might want to pay attention to that, that there will be less focus on stock market and energy prices at that time. So in terms of politics, it also looks like we're still going to be paying a premium at the pump. And that's probably going to affect presidential and, and the uh, congressional races. Uh, this year. That's been the big driver. So a little change in energy prices, a little decline in inflation, but probably not enough 
to make uh, voters that have uh, experienced a lot of uh, anger about these prices uh, to vote. I think it's going to be a big influence. If I look at crude oil, my long-term cycles are looking at this. Now, we also get about the general idea. You can see that typically we see some sell-offs in this market. That pretty much... Uh, a nice cadence in the market, sell off, a little bit of sell off. So we're coming into that area. So you, the traders want to keep that in mind as well. And here's a little shorter term view of it. It looks like around uh, June 30th, we should see a peak in this market, this rally that we've been in right now. I would say, yeah, probably go up to about the 30th. Then we pull back and we should see a bottom somewhere in the August time period. And then another cyclical move to the upside. So you, Guys and gals who like to trade this market, there's some pretty suggestive points for you. Uh, about the August 15th, and then around November 1st, we should start to see another decline in that market. So that's uh, hopefully will be something that will help you. These cycles, as you see, are not perfect, but they're suggestive. They give us a zone to focus our attention on. Gold, oh, we've got to talk about gold. Yeah, what an unusual year this has been for gold. We've had high inflation, right? But not much has gone on uh, with the price of gold. Uh, and, and I've said this in my forecast, my writings for a long time, uh, if there's to be a runaway bull market in gold, the Commitment of Trades Report will indicate it. Uh, you would think that at a time of inflation, the market would rally big, but it hasn't. I love this ad from the past. They laughed when I sat down to play the piano. And that's kind of what happens when I do my cycle forecast. I did one for Jim Cramer and Mad Money about the market. Oh my gosh, everybody thought I was crazy because I was using some cyclical stuff. But this is our cycle forecast that we showed here in stockchart.com uh, at the end of the year, last year, and we suggested a peak about 226, low about 526. And well, how did that turn out? This is how it turned out. Uh, you can see it, and this was another forecast, the same thing. We started the year rally and then we come down. And here's what actually happened. There was 526. Yeah, we missed the high by a few days. We missed the low by a few days. But clearly, you had the indication from cycles the market should be in a downtrend. So we can be looking at this now and say, okay, which way are we going? We're going to be going to the upside or we're going to be going to the downside. And that's where cycles come in. Right here, right now, uh, cyclical forecasts are moving to the upside. And notice we saw lows back here, a low over here. We're getting into a low here. This suggests we can see gold rally into the August time frame, have a bit of a pullback, and then move up again in October. Keep in mind, it doesn't mean gold will go up like this and down like this. It means the trend is up, the trend is down. Gold may make a much higher low over here, just as these are opportunities to look for buys, opportunities to look for sells in the market. On a very long-term forecast, going all the way out to 2023, this is what it looks like. A bit of a rally come down, but this high that we saw this year is a significant high. Uh, this is an important cyclical high. The next major important cyclical low comes in 2023. I know, I know. You're going to talk about the president, politics, and Federal Reserve, and deficits, and all that stuff, but I really, you know, that's not what moves the gold market emotionally for a little bit, but the market is really driven by commercials. This is the market that people produce it, use it. And like the price of apples, when there's more buyers and sellers, the price goes up and then gold is a commercially driven market. So please keep that in mind. Okay, stockjar.com. We're going to look at the gold market right here, right now. And we're getting close to a buy. This is our accumulation index, our money flow index. Notice what happened. Oh, gold went up. Is in buy zone, went up, buy zone, buy zone. We're close to that. So you want to watch that in stockchart.com because a seasonal rally is also due for this market uh, towards the end of this month. So we see cyclicals are suggesting to the upside. We've seen some pretty good buying, not quite enough yet, but we're close. So this is the market, guys and gals, you want to pay attention to. The stock market, wow, which way? Up, down, straight? What are we going to do in the stock market? Well, I'm going to give you my best shot at it. First of all, we can look at seasonal charts and we go back to the one, the gold right here and see what gold says to the upside, right? Oh, by the way, how about a round of applause and thanks to stockcharts.com. I don't get paid for doing this. They don't get paid for doing this. Uh, we all are doing it for kind of a labor of love and a commitment to the market and to our followers. So 
Uh, I want to thank them and thank you as well. We've got a lot of followers that have come in and watched these. I know some of you don't like what I say. Some of you do. It doesn't matter. It's what makes the markets a difference of opinion, but different of personalities. What I try to do is give you what I think is going to happen in the market. And usually it does, not always, because I'm far from perfect in this business. I love this headline. This guy is always falling on Wall Street. This guy is falling. There's always negative news out there about, about Wall Street. Oh, we're, we were going to have a bad recession, a depression, or whatever. There's always negative stuff in the market. So buy sky. The sky is falling by sky. That's all I can tell you. And this is a bearish bias that we certainly all have. But we have a view of the future. Here is the average of prices 1952 to 2012 on average. This is how they've traded during the year. And pretty much what we've done this year, oh, we're getting into the June, July low. Look what we should have seen coming later this year. Whoa, this is how markets usually rally. And this is one of those charts when I did that people laughed, oh, we all average all years and two. That makes no sense. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. The guy that originally did this, Scheduled Warren Smith, did this years ago. Uh, Mr. Buffett called him one of the brightest guys he's ever met. So good general roadmap for us to follow. Get ready for fireworks coming later this year. But where do we go from here specifically? Well, here's a blow up of that pattern I just showed you. So we're in the rally phase now, a bit of a pullback July, and then big fireworks start at the end of July to the upside, up close and personal. Now, if we look at our stockcharts.com, how significant was the recent low that we saw? Look at this. We have our money flow index, saw major buying. They were buying back here, buying here, buying here, buying here, and they just had stepped into the buy zone up here. So this low that we saw in the market recently, I don't think it's like a short-term phenomena. I think it's a phenomena that has legs to it. If we look at our cycle forecast, we also see that we're at a cyclical low here. Again, a cyclical low doesn't mean we'll have a massive rally. It means look for buying opportunities. In an uptrend, of course, you're going to get good rallies. The bottom of bear market, you'll get good rallies. But this suggestion now for my cycles is that we should rally until around the middle of August, first part of August, and have a bit of a pullback in the market and take off again. So there's some perspective for you on the stock market. If we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average on a longer term basis, the 18 week cycle has been really strong in here. You can see the lows that came on the 18 week cycle, and that's just where we are now, which suggests we can rally all the way up a long time. This was into April and then pulled down in six to eight. I also like to use bonds fundamentals to forecast stock prices. So we're looking at the bond market in blue and the stock market in red, interest rates do have an impact. And this is the forecast we've been working on, had called the big up move, the down move, and we're not quite there yet. And again, these aren't perfect, but we're in the area now where interest rates will be positive for stocks, not negative for stocks. So that's a real positive for all of us for the stock market. One more fundamental thing clicking in. I like valuation of the market. We talked about that earlier. This is times that the stock market was undervalued. I've marked off all of these. And you can see when we're undervalued, prices rally because prices are at value at that particular point. And here we are now. You can see the last times we were undervalued over here. Notice it doesn't mean we're oversold. There's no big sell-off in here, but we're undervalued. You don't have to have a big sell-off or no big sell-off in here or here at all and we're undervalued. We just entered the undervalued zone. That's probably why we saw such a spectacular rally this last week. Prices finally became undervalued in the stock market. So here's an investment idea that I have for you. Uh, there's two charts here. This is the blue line is where we buy stuff, Walmart, Costco, Target, and the purplish line is what we buy. These things we buy at Walmart, Costco, things from Procter & Gamble, things from Unilever, and what a difference if we actually look at this, that what we buy and where we buy it, has, there's been a, diff, a big difference. Look at the weakness that we saw here versus the blue line. So in terms of investing, you might want to think about that. We buy from Procter & Gamble, General Mills, Kraft, Diageo, Booth Company. These have been really strong stocks because Apple and Google and Facebook may go up and down 
but people have to buy bacon for breakfast. They've got to buy snacks and Mondelez. They're going to buy good wine and rum or whatever from Diageo and food from the Procter and Gamble and soap. And so people really have to buy this stuff. The real intrinsic need for this. And they have to buy it at these places. Now, these places may or may not make money selling it. So that's the problem you have. But in terms of investment strategy, boy, these are some really amazing stocks to focus on. I know they're not as attractive as razzle dazzle as Apple and Netflix, but they sure are consistent. And I like consistency in my portfolio. We talked about interest rates affecting stocks. Here's the American Airlines. And here's interest rates. Interest rates that have affected the stock are forecast was for this market to rally. It's begun that. Looks like it's going to go even higher. Obviously, American Airlines has a lot of debt, so interest rates matter. You can see pretty much that things cause things to happen in this business. People think that charts drive the market. No, charts don't drive the markets. They show where the market went. They don't show what's going to happen. Conditions are what drive the markets. Okay, it is bonus time. Thank for staying with me this far. I appreciate that. But I have something now to show you I think you're going to really like. And here it is. We're going to go all the way back to 1910, 11, 1912. And we're going to go forward from that 19 years. And look what happened. Whoa, the last wild, crazy up move in the stock market. Hmm. And if we went back 19 years earlier, you'd find another market rally. But let's go 19 years forward from 2027 uh, before the big run-up we saw. There's 19 years later. That was the low in 1946. Hmm, intriguing, isn't it? So if we go from the 1946 low and come up 19 years, we come into the 1965, kind of like that last run-up. We saw under the crash of 27. That was when, in 1966 when the Dow hit 1,000. That was an all time high, and the market immediately came down. Very slimmer to that run up that we saw in 1929. But clearly, 19 years later, from the buy point back here, there was another buy point. So if we go from that buy point in 1965, 19 years later, oh, look where we are. Another runaway big up market. Intriguing, isn't it? So if we come back 19 years later, uh, come forward 19 years, we're just right after the low that we saw in 2002, three, didn't call the exact low, but whew, prices again had a lot of strength. A lot of bullishness came into the market on this 19 year extension, if you will. And if we go from that extension uh, 19 years later, we're here, right here, right now. So. For that reason, I think uh, along with the other things that I've shown that uh, there are a lot of reasons to expect that what we've seen in the market is a significant low has been put in. By the way, the forecast charts where I'm using the um, uh, cycle forecast, that's from timingsolutions.com. I don't get anything from them. I use them. It's been a great service. People always ask me, how do you do a cycle forecast? I do those at timingsolutions.com. Well, thought to close on, no one's perfect or even right much of the time in this business, so we keep learning. Uh, certainly, I've had my fair share of errors. I've had some pretty good calls, too. That's why you guys and gals hang around, I hope, at least. Um, but, uh, you know, nobody's perfect in this business. So we keep learning, keep working at it. Uh, this is 60-some years I've been doing this. I'm a little smarter now than I was a few years ago. And that's the joy of this business, of always learning something Say, oh, yeah, look at that. Look at these things we can learn about the market. So I hope that we both learned something special today. If you like the presentation, put a thumbs up, make a comment. If you don't like it, put a thumbs down, make a comment. I do try to reply to your comments uh, as they come in. So if they're there, just let me know, and uh, I'll try to get back to you if there's anything really significant. Well, that's it. That wraps it up for another StockCharts.com presentation. And now you know where Larry Williams thinks the stock market will be going. Until next time, wishing you good luck and good trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.